Hello everyone, can you all hear me? Hello. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Hello. Good evening, yes, yes, everyone. Yes. Yes, finally I got the audio. Yes. So, So yes, with just one month, you know, today is 21st December. So 30 days to go for the exam. We are all set for a very quick rapid revision. Well, this is supposed to be a 25 images in 25 minute session, a hand pinked IBQ sprint. So it is supposed to be like a sprint, a fast 100 meter race where we finish everything very quickly. But as much as I could try, I couldn't fit everything into 25 images. So you will have to sit with me a little more than 25 minutes for this session. Is the screen audible to everyone? Yes. So... In this session here, Audible, let me just, uh... now when we talk about this session, I am sure all of you have read Dermatology at least once and in this session, we are here to discuss just the most important images that may come in the exam. Since this is a sprint session, a fast paced session, I will not be writing much here. We will be doing more of visualizing the images, seeing the images with me once and I will be speaking more than I will be writing. Is that okay with all of you? That I will be speaking more than I would be writing? Can I get some responses? Is there a lot of lag? It's fine. So, yes. So, we'll start now starting with the first thing, which is the blush coid lines, dermatomes and Langer's lines. A very favorite question of the FMG exam and so favorite amongst the examiners that it was also asked in the INI May 23. So, we have three lines. <laughs> Excuse the cuff. We have three lines, the blush coil lines, dermatomes and Langer's lines. When you look at the blush coil lines, you see that the shape of the lines is different on different body areas. The scalp, the chest, the abdomen, limbs, everywhere, the shape of the lines is different. There is a midline demarcation. These lines are lines of embryonal migration. The important dermatoses along these include the incontinentia pigmentae, hypomelanosis of veto, and the epidermal nevi. So if you get this as an image, the only thing that you have to see is that the shape is different on different body areas. Next, we come to dermatomes. These are the areas supplied by each spinal nerve. Now here, these will have a midline demarcation, but the shape is straight 
wherever they are on the body they are straight lines and important dermatosis along these is herpes zoster and then we have the langers line this was the question in the may exam where they gave an image of the langers lines and asked to identify it these are lines along which the collagen fibers are oriented when you look at the image it looks like an egyptian mummy wrapped in bandages so you know as if you have wrapped the white bandages on somebody's body that's how these langers line look like so blashko shape is variable dermatome straight lines and langers would be an egyptian mummy this is how you will identify these three lines after the lines we move to disorders of hair which is a very important question across all exams whenever you get a question on hair first and foremost in the exam you have to identify the pattern of the hair fall if there is a specific pattern in which the hair fall is happening then the diagnosis is ag if it is a diffuse hair loss then it is effluvians and if it is patchy that we will cover later now coming to the specific pattern this is androgenic alopecia remember the name of the hormone dihydrotestosterone enzyme 5 alpha reductase starts in the when you see this kind of an image in the image you see that the hair fall has started from the front to temporal area and then it is going peachy in these <coughs> in this session i will be focusing on more of how to identify images than the theory so whatever theory is written you can read i will be just talking about the images so what we have here is this photo of a male in which you see that the recession has started in the frontal temporal areas and it is going towards the crown so this kind of an image the diagnosis is aga in the women you will see that the hair fall is more in the central parting this is how you identify aga in the exam very important to remember the mechanism of action of finasteride which is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor now coming to the diffuse hair falls where the question will say that the patient is suffering from a diffuse hair fall or an increased hair fall if this kind of a word is there patient is on cancer chemotherapy answer is anagen effluvium there is history of some trigger and a gap of 3 4 months between the trigger and the hair fall the answer is telogen effluvium as simple as that here you don't have to bother about images you just have to look for the key words in the question cancer chemotherapy anagen effluvium any trigger like delivery of a baby acute febrile illness then there is a specific mention of a gap of 3 to 4 months then the answer is telogen effluvium this year in july august september there was a lot of dengue especially in north india so please remember you may get a question with respect to dengue causing telogen effluvium then we have the patchy hair falls when you have the patchy hair falls you have to differentiate between alopecia areata trichotillomania and tinea capitis how does alopecia areata look like you will have well defined patches of completely smooth bald patch so you see well defined non scarring alopecia the skin in it is completely smooth like what i call it chikni chameli so the skin in alopecia areata is completely chikni it is saaf ekdam you don't see anything there so this is how alopecia areata looks like this is the question which has been asked twice in 2021 and 2019 what is this image what do you see here you see this beautiful sign here this is the exclamation mark here this is a very 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 important image with respect to alopecia areata then in the nail what do we see we see regular pitting so in the nail what do we see a regular pitting this is the pitting of alopecia areata so regular that it is called as a geometric nail so these two are the important images from alopecia areata trichotillomania was a question in the july 23 exam it is an ocd where the patient picks out their own hair so in this lesion here you see a bizarre irregular shape of 
the hair loss then there are broken hair there are hair of different lengths and there may be some peri follicular hemorrhages okay so irregular patch broken hair in it it is not chikni chameli on the other hand it looks dirty it looks kaise baal tode hue hai na so this is like a dirty hair fall patch that you see can you now differentiate between trichotillomania and alopecia areata in the image so this is hair areata well defined chikni and this is trichotillomania which is a dirty looking teda meda sa patch if the patient eats the hair that they pluck out they can have a trichobezoar forming in the intestine which can cause intestinal obstruction this was the question asked in the july 23 exam this is a complication of trichotillomania then we have tinea capitis here tinea capitis is a fungal infection caused by the dermatophytes if you see a lot of gray colored scaling with hair loss it is gray patch if you see a lot of black dots in the patch then it is black dot tinea capitis and one very important hint with respect to tinea capitis is that the patient will always be a child so it will be a pediatric 8 year 7 year old 5 year old patient who will present with itchy non scarring patchy alopecia so it will be itchy it will be non scarring and it will be a patch gray colored scaling gray patch black dots black dot then kirion will be a red swelling with pustules with easy pluckability of the hair and regional lymphadenopathy kirion is not painful that is how you differentiate this from a fungal infection very important to know that kirion is not painful that is how you differentiate that is how you know that this is not a bacterial infection now whether it is gray patch it is black dot it is kirion the next investigation is always koh scraping so with a lot of fungal infections they tend to ask you the question what is the next test that you will do what is the next investigation that they will do this is the koh scraping then one more thing that you need to know is the causative organism of another type of tinea capitis which is favus the fungus here is trichophyton shonlonai drug of choice for all tinea capitis is griseofulbin given at a dose of 15 to 20 mg per kg per day for 4 to 6 weeks okay so this is griseofulbin 15 to 20 mg per kg per day 4 to 6 weeks is the drug of choice clear to everyone so alopecia areata a chikna well defined patch trichotillomania dirty looking irregular patch and tinea capitis will have scaling it will have black dots it will have the red boggy swelling of kirion so very easy to differentiate these from each other next we come to disorders of the glands in which an image of hydrin nitrous suppurativa was asked in your exam last year this is a disorder involving the apocrine glands since apocrine glands are present only in the axilla nipple and the groin these are the areas where you will see hydrodenitis suppurativa and these glands become active at puberty so the question will say that the disease is present in a 19 or a 20 or maybe another 30 40 year old person so this is an image which will have multiple nodules abscesses sinuses scarring in the axilla area this is a very important image that you can get in the exam and hs is also called as inverse acne most important to remember association with the apocrine gland and an image of the axilla where these sinuses abscesses will be seen then a very 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 erstwhile favorite i will say erstwhile favorite because now they have so many things to ask they have forgotten for dicey spots as a question but you never know remember s for spots s for sebaceous glands so for dicey spots are ectopic sebaceous glands since sebaceous glands produce sebum which is yellow in color these glands also look like yellow dots on the lips so these glands look like yellow dots on the lips these are for dicey spots very very important if it comes as an image you cannot absolutely do it wrong <coughs> <coughs> differentiate this from another disease which is called as fox 
for dicey disease this is a disorder of apocrine glands it is also called as apocrine malaria there is blockage of the apocrine glands so do not ever confuse for dicey spots with fox for dicey disease next we come to disorder of a pilosebaceous unit so here it is not just sebaceous gland this is disorder of pilosebaceous unit which is acne very very important in the last seven exams there have been five questions on acne vulgaris so five out of seven exams have had a question on acne remember it's a disorder of pilosebaceous unit the bacteria here is propinobacterium acne primary lesion is a comedon whatever image you see papules pustules nodules but the primary lesion is always a comedon this was the question in the jan 23 exam now when you have a predominantly comedonal acne you identify these black comedons in the images yes so there will be small small black dots on the forehead like this so these are all blackheads or open comedons this is called as comedonal acne treatment of choice is topical retinoid this was the question that was asked in your august 2020 exam which of the following will be used as a treatment for this patient so the image showed comedonal acne treatment of choices topical retinoids which could be tretinoin and which could be adapalene okay next we have is grade 4 which is nodulocystic acne here in the image you will see multiple papules pustules comedons nodulocystic lesions so this is a nodulocystic acne it is the most severe type of acne and since we are able to see all of these types of acne lesions at the same time in the patient acne by definition is a polymorphic disorder so there are multiple morphologies at the same time treatment of choice for nodulocystic acne oral isotretinoin most important side effect teratogenicity which was the question asked in the december exam so please remember treatment of choice isotretinoin given at a dose of 1 mg per kg per day and very important side effect is teratogenicity can you tell me which other disease has polymorphic lesions i said acne has polymorphic lesions which other disease has polymorphic lesions who can tell me who can tell me which other disease has polymorphic lesions which other disease has polymorphic lesions after acne Yes yes waiting waiting tell me very good very good <coughs> very good vaseem varicella yes another disease which has polymorphic lesions is varicella this was your question in a 2020 exam patient with fever and polymorphic lesions the answer was varicella next disorder that we have is rosacea this is also a disorder of sebaceous gland presents as redness papules pustules involving the convexities of the face patient has a hot burning sensation on going out in sun on eating hot spicy food so this is rosacea when you get such an image the answer is rosacea can anyone tell me how to differentiate rosacea from acne how to differentiate from acute ele so in acne we see comedons in acne we see comedons and that is something we don't see in rosacea so in acne we see comedons that's a very important thing that you have to remember rosacea there are no comedons no comedons okay so in rosacea no comedons on the other hand how do you differentiate acute ele from rosacea this is a butterfly rash starts from the malar area traverses over the bridge of the nose to the other side so bilaterally symmetrical involves the bridge of the nose while rosacea involves the tip of the nose this is how you differentiate rosacea from the malar rash nasolabial folds are actually spared in both if you go into the theory 
even rosacea does not involve nasolabial folds okay now in long standing rosacea patients can develop a complication which is called as rhinophyma where you see this potato nose so when you get this kind of an image this is a potato nose that is rhino phyma now coming to some important infections non bullous impetigo has always been a favorite of the fmg exam it used to be a very 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 often asked image based question till about 2020 after that not so much so caused by streptococcus pyogenes group a streptococcal bacteria non bullous impetigo beautiful golden yellow honey colored crusting especially on the face a uh, important remote complication psgn so in the 2020 exam they gave this image and they asked what is the remote complication the remote complication is psgn then in 2019 exam they asked what is the causative organism of erysipela so causative organism of erysipela is again streptococcus this is an infection of the dermal lymphatics what you see here is a painful skin lesion with well defined margins remember erysipela is caused by streptococcus infection of the dermal lymphatics then we have staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome image was asked back in 2019 here you see a baby who will have peeling of skin but without any mucosal involvement so very very important a baby with peeling of skin without mucosal involvement is staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome happens due to toxin produced by the bacteria which is epidermolytic toxin next we come to follicular pyodermas the most common cause of all follicular pyodermas is staph aureus so most common cause of all follicular pyodermas is staph aureus this was the image which was given in the 2020 exam it's a furuncle what you see is a big red painful nodule with pus pointers so this is a furuncle then in patients who may have uncontrolled diabetes they can develop carbuncle where there are multiple contiguous hair follicles involved most common site is the nape of neck but here what image you need to remember is furuncle and carbuncle so these are follicular pyodermas then we come to an infection caused by a corini bacteria minutissimum which is erythrasma the question here will say a patient with uncontrolled diabetes presents with an asymptomatic hyperpigmented scaly patch in the axilla what is the next investigation that you will do so if the question says asymptomatic then you can easily differentiate this from tinea because tinea is itchy and erythrasma is asymptomatic so if there is a patient who is diabetic presenting with an asymptomatic patch in the axilla it is erythrasma caused by corini bacteria minutissimum wood's lamp will show a coral red fluorescence okay so wood's lamp will show a coral red fluorescence very very important this was the image in the 2022 exam <coughs> very important erythrasma then scrofuloderma in august 20 as well as december 20 a child presenting with multiple sinuses and ulcers in the neck which have a bluish margin the answer is scrofuloderma there is nothing else that has bluish margins the minute a question says bluish margins you have to think of tuberculosis in the neck of a baby the answer baby means a child the answer is scrofuloderma then we come to leprosy look at the number of boxes this is a very favorite question across the ini exam across the neat as well as the fmg exam the question that they asked in the july 23 exam was a patient presents with hyperpigmented skin lesion with sensory loss what is the diagnosis the diagnosis was leprosy remember leprosy is also called as hansen's disease so if the question says hansen's disease it just means leprosy okay now a patient presenting with a hypopigmented lesion with sensory loss for all practical purposes the answer is leprosy then if a patient presents with these ring shaped lesions and the options are 
the leprosy types the answer is borderline borderline leprosy which has these beautiful ring shaped annular lesions then this was the image in the 2020 exam this is leonine facies seen in lepromatous leprosy you see there is loss of fibros madarosis then there is saddle nose there are buddha ears and the whole face looks like a lion so this is the typical leonine facies which we see in ll leprosy then treatment of leprosy is mbmdt treatment of leprosy is mbmdt this will always be a red blister pack and it will have red and white color tablets okay so red and white color tablets is a leprosy kit given for 6 months in pb patients 12 months in mb patients then bt leprosy is another type which i have not put here because generally that is not asked as an image one thing you have to remember about bt is it is the most common type of leprosy in india and it is having satellite lesions when a leprosy patient starts treatment the bacteria are killed these antigens can elicit an excessive immune response which is called as leprosy reaction so if you get a question where a patient of leprosy has started treatment this was asked in the fmg exam also in june uh, 22 in one of the exams in 22 this was also asked so if a patient of leprosy starts treatment and they develop a reaction you have to differentiate between a type 1 and a type 2 reaction in type 1 reaction the leprosy lesion will become red and inflamed while in type 2 reaction there will be new red painful lesions all over the body of the patient which are called as enl since ll leprosy involves the entire body patient will have enl all over the body along with fever along with joint pain along with hepatitis uveitis and orchitis <coughs> so systemic involvement is seen in type 2 reaction and type 2 is always seen in ll leprosy so this is how you differentiate a type 1 from a type 2 leprosy reaction whatever is the diagnosis treatment will always be to continue mbmdt and start steroids so never mark an option where the mbmdt is stopped even if you are told that the patient started treatment and after treatment he developed this even if the question says that doesn't matter you will never stop the mbmdt you will always continue it now there is one more drug which we can give in type 2 reaction what is that can you tell me there is one more drug which can be given in type 2 reaction what is one more drug that can be given in type 2 reaction? Thalidomide. So there is another drug which can be given here that is thalidomide. Thalidomide has a very important side effect of teratogenicity. It can cause phocomelia. So it is <coughs> a spare drug. It is not the treatment of choice. Treatment of choice are always steroids. So finishing with leprosy, we come to the next topic, which are the fungal infections. Here we have the pityriasis versicola. Please remember, I'm only covering the most important points here. We are not revising the entire dermatology. I am just covering the most important points. And this includes almost all the PYQs of the last three years as well. So if you sit through this session with me, you will also end up revising all the important PYQs. So here we have pityriasis versicolor caused by a commensal. This fungus is called as Manisesia furfur. So what we have here is a fungus that causes multiple hypopigmented scaly patches over the upper back and the upper chest. So the question will tell you that the patient has multiple hypopigmented scaly patches all over the back and the chest. What is the causative organism? Malicesia furfur. What is the next step? KOH examination. What do you see in KOH examination? Spaghetti and meatball appearance. What do you see in Wood's lamp? Pale yellow fluorescence. So remember, PV shows a P by fluorescence. So in the KOH, spaghetti meatball. In the Wood's lamp, pale yellow fluorescence. Can use azoles for treatment, but what you cannot use is a very important question. That is griseofulvin and terbinafin. So what we cannot use is griseofulvin and terbinafin. 
Okay, is this clear to everyone? <coughs> Multiple hyperpigmented scaly patches over the upper back. Now, there is another disease which has hyperpigmented scaly patches. That disease is pityriasis alba. This also has hyperpigmented scaly patches, but it is seen in a child on the face. So this is the difference between P alba and P versicolor. P versicolor always an adult patient. P alba always a child with these hyperpigmented scaly lesions on the face. So never confuse pityriasis versicolor with pityriasis alba. P alba is a type of eczema. P versicolor is a fungal infection. Then we come to tinea's. Wherever tinea is on the body, the lesion looks the same. It will be a red ring-shaped annular plaque with scaling vesicles and pustules. So it will be a red ring-shaped plaque with scaling vesicles and pustules. And the most important symptom which will tell you that the patient is suffering from tinea is that the question will say patient presents with an itchy lesion. So itch. <coughs> itch is a very important symptom of tinea. Very, very, very important. Sometimes the patient may be applying steroids on it, which will initially reduce the redness and the scaling. But when they stop the steroids, it will all come back. Now, this is called as tinea incognito. Why? Because when they are applying the steroids, the redness will reduce, the scaling will reduce. You may not be able to see the full rings. So this is a little difficult to identify, which is why it is called as tinea incognito. Okay, very, very important. This was the question in the July exam. It is, sound is cracking. Is the sound cracking? Is the sound cracking? Is it all right now? Is there any issue with the sound? Is it all right now? Okay, so coming to Tinea, here what we have is a red annular itchy plug with scaling vesicles. And pustules. When the patient is applying steroids, steroid modified tinea is called as tinea incognito. This was the question in the July 23 exam. Okay. Very, very important are the subcutaneous mycosis. Generally, there are three subcutaneous mycosis which are always together in all the options. So, you need to know how they look. Sporotrichosis caused by sporotrich shenkai. Most of the diseases happen in rose gardeners. So here what you have is a patient who is a gardener presents with linear nodulo-ulcerative lesions over the leg. Okay, so what you have is multiple nodules in a line on the neck and the answer is sporotrichosis. Very, very, very simple if you just look for the line. This line is actually the lymphoid distribution. Next, we have is chromoblastomycosis. Here, you have to remember three C's. C for chromo, C for cauliflower-like nodule, and C for copper penny bodies. So, here again, it will be a patient presenting with cauliflower-like lesions on the foot. In the biopsy, you will see these beautiful copper penny bodies. So, chromoblastomycosis, copper penny bodies, cauliflower-like lesions. This is how chromoblastomycosis will look. So just revise with me again. Sporotrichosis, linear lesions, chromoblastomycosis, 
cauliflower like lesions and mycetoma will be a foot swelling so these three subcutaneous mycoses look very different from each other yet they are always there in the options and a lot of students get confused mycetoma will always be a foot swelling because that's a part of the triad a painless subcutaneous mass with sinuses with discharge containing grains the patient will always be a farmer with a lesion on the foot Sporotrichosis, I'll show you again, will be lesions in a line. Chromoblastomycosis will be cauliflower like lesions, and mycetoma will be a foot swelling. Look at the number of red boxes here. It is a very, very, very favorite question of the FMG exam. Foot swelling with sinuses, with discharge. The answer is mycetoma, most commonly caused by Madurella mycetoma. Metis. Then there is another group which is called as actinomycetoma. This is a bacterial infection. Differentiate this from eumycetoma, which is caused by the fungi. However, if you just see this kind of a clinical picture where the foot is swollen and you see a lot of discharge coming out, answer is mycetoma. So these were the important fungal infections. Then we come to herpes labialis. This is a viral infection caused by herpes simplex virus 1. Wherever the word herpes comes, herpes will always be grouped painful vesicles on a red base. So wherever the word herpes comes, it will be grouped painful vesicles on a red base. Is the audio clear now? Is the audio clear? Is the audio clear, dear students? Please tell me. Waiting for your responses. Is the audio clear? <clears throat> okay, good. So, Wherever the word herpes comes, there will be grouped painful vesicles on a red base. When it is on the lips, it is herpes labialis caused by HSV1. When it is on the genitalia, it is herpes genitalis caused by HSV2. And when you get these grouped painful vesicles in a dermatome, these are called as herpes zoster. So here we have these grouped painful vesicles along a dermatomal distribution. This is herpes zoster, most commonly what you get is the thoracic site which is involved. The virus that causes herpes zoster is varicella zoster virus. Please do not mark herpes simplex with it. Herpes zoster is caused by varicella zoster virus. And when you make a zinc smear from this, what is the finding on the zinc smear? We get multinucleate giant cells. Herpes zoster is also called as shingles. Treatment of choice for all herpes is a cyclo. Then we have varicella, very, very favorite of your exam. Even in the July 23 exam, it was asked a child with fever with vesicles all over the body is equal to varicella. So fever with vesicles in a child is varicella. Fever with polymorphic rash, varicella. Dew drop on rose petal appearance, varicella. All other measles, rubella, roseola and phantom, all of these have a plain red rash vesicles only in varicella okay caused by varicella zoster virus centripetal rash polymorphic rash dew drop on rose petal appearance these are all the points that you need to remember about varicella now there is another fever with vesicles in a child but here the vesicles are only on hand foot and mouth this is hand foot mouth disease Caused by Coxsackie virus A16. So fever with vesicles all over the body is varicella. Fever with vesicles on hand, foot and mouth, it is HFMD caused by Coxsackie A16 virus. Understood everyone? Good. Then another beautiful, <laughs> beautiful <laughs> image that they ask in the exam. This is molluscum contagiosum. Caused by Molluski pox virus, 
पर्ली वाइट डोम शेप पैप्यूल्स विथ सेंट्रल अम्बलिकेशन Pearly white dome shaped papules with central amplification, and this is a sign where you see multiple lesions in a line. This is called as the Henderson. Uh, this is called as the pseudo Cobner's phenomena, and the inclusion bodies that we see in molluscum are called as Henderson Paterson bodies. So, what are the points that you have to remember here? Caused by pox virus, papules with central amplification, pseudo Cobner's, and Henderson Paterson bodies. Simple. Then we have. Warts. Can you tell me what causes warts? What is the virus that causes warts? <clears throat> what is the virus that causes warts? It is human papilloma virus (HPV). There are multiple types of the virus. Different types of warts are caused by different viruses, but we don't have to remember them. We only have to remember genital warts, which I will tell you. So when you see warts, these are papules with a rough verrucous surface. Since they are always there in the option, so you should just know what warts look like. They will be papules with a rough verrucous surface. Please don't mark HPV six and eleven. Six eleven. A lot of you are writing six eleven. 611 is only for genital warts okay normally these common warts which you see here are caused by hpv 2 and 4 common warts are caused by hpv 2 and 4 and verruca plana which are these plain warts these are caused by 3 and 10 it is genital warts Which are caused by six and eleven, so that is the difference here. Then we have parvovirus B nineteen, which causes this disease, which is called as erythema infectiosum or the fifth disease. This is a very important question. Asked two times, child who is Gandhi ji ka bhag, ek gal pe thappar followed by dusre gal pe thappar. So this is the slap cheek appearance. Which you get in erythema infectiosum or the fifth disease. Other problems caused by this virus: aplastic crisis in patients with sickle cell anemia and congenital fetal hydrops. So these are the three important diseases caused by parvovirus B19. Then what is sixth disease? <clears throat> sixth disease is caused by HHV6, which is Rosella infantum. So sixth disease is Rosella infantum, which is caused by HHV6. But remember, slap cheek appearance parvovirus B19. Scabies used to be a favorite question in the FMG exam till some time back, but now they have so many things to ask. They have stopped asking scabies. But still, we need to know caused by the mite, which is Sarcoptes scabiae var hominis. This used to be a favorite image-based question also. So when you see this image, you see a round gray mite which has one, two, three, and four, four pairs of legs. So this is the mite that is the Sarcoptes scabiae mite. Patient will present with itchy lesions all over the body, especially in the finger webs. So this kind of an image can come. Then there may also be a history of nocturnal pruritus, other family members with similar disease. But what is the pathognomonic lesion? It's a burrow, which is a tunnel in which the mite lives, found at the level of stratum corneum. If there is an infant presenting with scabies in the infant, we will have vesicular pustular lesions over the palms and the soles. So this is a very, very typical image-based question with respect to infantile scabies, where we see vesicular pustular lesions over the palms and soles. Whatever is the type of scabies, treatment of choice is five percent per meter. <clears throat> Then we come to genital ulcers. In the genital ulcers, first of all, in the question, you have to assess whether the lesion is painless or it is painful. A painless genital ulcer could be syphilis or donovanosis, while a painful genital ulcer is chancroid or herpes. Syphilis will classically be described as a painless, indurated. genital ulcer so the typical description of syphilis would be a painless indurated genital ulcer with painless bilateral inguinal 
swellings. So painless indurated ulcer, painless inguinal lymphadenopathy. Next investigation, dark field microscopy in which we see these spiral bacteria. Treatment of choice, single dose benzathine penicillin. Other painless ulcer that we have is donovanosis. Here we will have a single big white, big red, velvety red, beefy red ulcer. And there is no lymphadenopathy. Donovanosis is the only genital ulcer where there is no lymphadenopathy. But you have to remember a word here which is called as pseudobubo. Pseudobubo is seen in donovanosis. Genital ulcers, when we have multiple painful genital ulcers with a yellow surface with painful inguinal lymphadenopathy, the answer is chancroid. So, multiple painful ulcers which have a yellow surface with painful pus filled suppurative inguinal lymphadenopathy, it is chancroid. Everything is painful, everything is yellow. Ulcers look yellow, lymph nodes are full of pus. So, yellow, yellow, pain, pain, everything is chancroid. This is not caused by chlamydia trichomatis. Can you tell me what is the bacteria that causes chancroid? This is wrong. Can you tell me what is the bacteria that causes chancroid? This is caused by the bacteria Haemophilus ducreae. So, this is caused by the bacteria Haemophilus ducreae. Yellow looking ulcer, yellow pus filled lymph nodes. Then we come to genitalis. Herpes genitalis will be multiple painful vesicles on a red base. So, this is herpes genitalis. Can you now differentiate between the genitalis? Also, look at the image. Syphilis will be a single beautiful round ulcer with a clean surface. Donovanosis will be a big red, beefy red ulcer. Chancroid will have yellow, yellow look, while herpes will be vesicles. So, is that clear to you all? Very important to be able to identify the ulcer images. Very, very important. Okay. And another question which comes is on secondary syphilis. In secondary syphilis, it will mention a patient who is a truck driver with a promiscuous history with multiple sexual partners, presents with multiple coppery brown macules on the palms and soles as shown in the image. Then there are genital lesions. What is the diagnosis? So, multiple coppery brown macules on the palms and soles with condyloma later on the genitalia. The answer is secondary syphilis. Very, very important. Asked twice. In fact, it was last asked in the FMG Jan 23 exam. So, very important. Minute you get this word, coppery brown macules on the palms and soles. Again, is there an audio issue? Again, is there an audio issue? Please tell me, I'll try to fix it. Check, check. Is there an audio issue? Okay, so secondary syphilis, coppery brown scaly macules on the palms and soles and these flat looking lesions on the genitalia which are called as condyloma lata. You may not get an image of condyloma lata on its own but you have to differentiate it from genital wards. So what does lata mean? Lata means soya wa, means sleeping. So these are always flat lesions. Remember condyloma lata is always flat lesions. Okay. Please do not confuse it with genital warts. I'll show you when we come to it. Then there is a question from tertiary syphilis also that is asked, what is the part of aorta? What is the part of aorta that shows involvement in tertiary syphilis? Can you tell me what is the part of aorta that shows uh, involvement in tertiary syphilis? What part of aorta shows involvement in tertiary syphilis? 
okay i'll write less if my writing makes it noisy then i will write less and i'll speak more i hope that'll be fine so <laughs> what part of aorta is involved in tertiary syphilis it is ascending aorta okay so this is ascending aorta no gamma is on the skin in the aorta we have ascending aorta involvement then we have urethral discharges gonococcal and non gonococcal in gonococcal urethritis you will see pus coming out of the urethra while non gonococcal ure urethritis will have a mucoid discharge so when you get an image you have to just look at the type of discharge that is coming out of the urethra if it is yellow that means it is gonococcal if it is clear mucoid means it is non gonococcal urethritis most common cause of non gonococcal urethritis is chlamydia trichomatis serotypes d2 k okay so this is gonococcal and non gonococcal urethritis next here wow look at the number of red and the green boxes this is a very 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 favorite of all the possible exams this is anogenital wards remember a for anogenital a for acuminata so anogenital wards is another name for condyloma acuminata most commonly hpv6 what you see are these multiple lesions on the genitalia which have a rough verrucous surface some of them have a pointy tips also so this is ano genital warts what we use here is imikimod which is a toll like receptor 7 agonist it is an immune response modifier but if the question asks what is the treatment in pregnancy in pregnancy cryotherapy and ca so in pregnancy let me know if you can still hear me can you still hear me is this better than before is this better than before so these are ano genital wards can you tell me what is the kit that we will use in urethral discharge gray kit what is the kit that is used in vaginal discharge what is the kit used in vaginal discharge green kit what is the kit for pid what is the kit for pid which kit is used for pid green kit is for vaginal discharge gray kit is for urethral discharge and it is yellow kit that is for pid these are the questions that have been asked from you now we come to the pappa and the dadda of the questions c psoriasis how many times it has been asked this is like a favorite 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 question of the examiners these are the different images that can be asked from psoriasis psoriasis has beautiful reddish plaques with silvery white scaling silvery white scaling so when you get a question patient presents with red plaques with silvery white scaling the answer is psoriasis what is the sign that we see positive in psoriasis ospitz sign so this is an image of ospitz sign what you see a psoriatic lesion with pin point bleeding in the center this is ospitz sign then we have gutted psoriasis happens in a child follows a streptococcal pharyngitis this image has been asked when you see multiple small 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 psoriatic lesions on the body of a child who has had streptococcal pharyngitis the answer is gutted psoriasis then we have pustular psoriasis which happens when a patient who is taking steroids suddenly stops it they can develop pustular psoriasis also called as von zumbusch disease 
Remember, drug of choice for pustular psoriasis is acetretin. Drug of choice for pustular psoriasis, acetretin. Drug of choice for gutted psoriasis, antibiotics. So, this is what you have to remember for the important images of the skin. Then we have this image of the nail. This question has been asked in the exam. Somebody asked me initially, where is irregular pitting seen? Irregular pitting is seen in a psoriatic nail. So, here you see pits are arranged irregularly on the nail surface. So, this is nail pitting in psoriasis. Most common sign is pitting. Most specific sign is salmon patch. Then another finding that we see here is scaling under the nail surface, which is called as subungual hyperkeratosis. This has also been asked as a image, subungual hyperkeratosis. So you have had an image of psoriatic nail, you have had an image of subungual hyperkeratosis, auspid sign, gutted psoriasis, normal psoriasis. All of these are very, very, very important images from psoriasis very important <coughs> now how do you differentiate a psoriatic nail from an alopecia areata irregular pitting here and there it is regular pitting how do you differentiate a nail psoriasis from a onychomycosis can anyone tell me how do we differentiate nail psoriasis from onychomycosis in onychomycosis there is no pitting. So, in onychomycosis, there is no pitting. That is the difference between a nail psoriasis and onychomycosis. So, these are all important images from psoriasis. Then they ask you the histopath also. Remember, Munro's abscess and Kogosh pustules are seen in psoriasis. Other things you still remember, but you have to also know that Munro's abscess and Kogosh pustules are seen in psoriasis. Then this was the question in the July 23 exam. A patient of psoriasis presents with dactylitis, swollen fingers, and flameless wrist joint. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is psoriatic arthritis. If a patient of psoriasis develops arthritis, especially involving the distal interphalangeal joints, the diagnosis is psoriatic arthritis. Fingers can be swollen, which is called as dactylitis, also called as sausage digits. More in patients who have an HLA B27 positivity. X ray shows pencil in cup deformity. What was the question asked in July 23 exam? They asked you psoriatic arthritis. In the December exam, they asked you patient has psoriasis with psoriatic arthritis. What is the treatment of choice? Treatment of choice is methotrexate. So, if a patient has psoriasis with psoriatic arthritis, the treatment of choice is methotrexate. Understood? Pustular psoriasis, acetretin, psoriasis with psoriatic arthritis, methotrexate. Now, also tell me what is the treatment of choice for impetigo herpetiformis, which is pustular psoriasis in pregnancy. Treatment of choice there is oral steroids. Only indication for oral steroids in psoriasis is impetigo herpetiformis. Now, this is a phenomenon that we see in psoriasis. It is called as Cobner's phenomena, where we have new lesions happening at sites of trauma, also called as isomorphic phenomena. There are two types, true Cobner's and pseudo -Cobner's. Instead of false Cobner's, you can also remember pseudo -Cobner's here. So, true Cobner's, remember my name, Pallavi, P-L-V. So, Pallavi stands for psoriasis, lichen, planus and vitiligo. So, true Cobner's is seen in psoriasis, lichen, planus and vitiligo. Very important, this was the question asked in the June 22 exam. Cobner's phenomena is seen in all except. So, P-L-V shows Cobner's phenomena. Then there is another thing which is called a pseudo -Cobner's. This is seen in molluscum and viral warts. It happens because of auto inoculation. So you may see molluscum lesions in a sign. You may see warts in a line. But this is pseudo -Cobner's. And when you have psoriasis, in psoriasis we will have red red lines with scaling. That is Cobner's phenomena. Lesions will always be in a line. 
Wow, they are also very fond of lichen planus. They have asked five P's in an exam, purple pruritic polygonal planar papules. Remember, very itchy. They have lacy reticulate striae on the surface, which are called as Wicken striae. This image has been asked many a times. Where you get these purple itchy papules? Purple papules only lichen planus. It can be nothing else. So, if a question says patient presents with itchy purple papules on the body, if there is an image of these itchy purple papules on the body, the answer is lichen planus. In the mucosa, we see this lacy white reticulate stria. Again, very, very, very important image based question. Lacy white reticulate stria in the oral cavity. Very important. This is oral lichen. Planus. In the nail, pterygium is the pathognomonic sign. It is a wing-shaped fold as you can see in this image. This is called as pterygium. It is the most pathognomonic sign of lichen planus and it causes a permanent loss of nail. When LP affects the nail, it causes nail loss. When LP affects the hair, which is called as lichen planopilaris, that is also a cause of scarring alopecia so scarring in the nail scarring in the hair this is lichen planus very 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 important then they have also asked the histopath in the 2021 exam remember civet bodies and sore toothing of the rete is seen in lichen planus p rosia only two things that you have to remember one is the christmas tree pattern Two is the peripheral colorate of scaling. So these are the only two things that you have to remember. And always know that even though the lesions are seen on the trunk, it is rosy. means they are red. Do not ever confuse it with pityriasis versi color. Okay, pityriasis rosia, pityriasis versi color. They sound a little similar, but rosia will always be red lesions. They will be in a Christmas tree pattern. And when you look at the lesion closely, they will have this. Very <laughs> nice peripheral colorate of scaling. Okay, so this is P. rosea. Next, we come to immunobullous disorders. When we talk about vesiculobullous disorders, first thing that you have to know is if the question says that a patient is presenting with flaccid bullying, that means the disease is pemphigus. If the question says patient presents with flaccid bullet, the disease is pemphigus. If it says patient presents with tense bullet, the disease is subepidermal pemphigoid. So this is the first thing that you have to notice in the question. Whether it is flaccid bullet or it is tense bullet. When it says flaccid bullet, that means the disease is pemphigus. Then we have to differentiate between pemphigus vulgaris and fallacious. For that, look at the mucosa. If it says flaccid bullet with oral ulcers, the answer is pemphigus vulgaris. Okay. And if it says no oral ulcers, no mucosal involvement, then the answer is pemphigus fallacious. Clear to everyone? Flaccid bullet means pemphigus. So, flaccid bullae with oral ulcers is equal to pemphigus vulgaris. Only skin involvement, only flaccid bullae is pemphigus fallacious. Nikolsky sign is positive in both. Bulla spread sign is positive in both. Fishnet IgG intraepidermal is seen in both. So, just remember where is Nikolsky sign seen? It is seen in pemphigus. Where is Bulla spread sign positive? Pemphigus. Where is Fishnet IgG pattern seen? Pemphigus. As simple as that. These are just the basics they ask you. They will not ask you a lot. The damage in pemphigus is desmosomes which bind keratinocytes to each other. So once the keratinocytes break away, they become separate. You get pemphigus. This is called as acantholysis. Then we come to the tense bullet. If it is an elderly patient who presents with tense bullet with itching, the diagnosis is bullous pemphigoid. So, elderly patient with itchy tense bullae, it is bullous pemphigoid. As simple as that. Then, when you look at the image, 
you see this balloon which is full of water it's a tense balloon this is a tense bulla contrast it with this here a flaccid bulla this is a fuss bulla fur for flaccid fur for fuss it's a fuss bulla on the other hand see this tushan wala tense bulla this is full of water so elderly patient with tense bulla with itching is bullous pemphigoid very very classic then with linear iga disease the only question that they ask is this string of pearls appearance linear iga disease is also called as chronic bullous disease of childhood and here what you get are these appearance which is called as string of pearl appearance or cluster of jewel appearance drug of choice for linear iga disease is dapsone then there is another sub epidermal disorder which is called as dermatitis herpetiformis only two things you have to remember with dermatitis herpetiformis d for dermatitis herpetiformis it is a deep sub epidermal disorder then associated with celiac disease so which disease is associated with celiac the answer is dermatitis herpetiformis understood everyone good next we come to the pigmentation disorders here we have melasma where we have bilateral brown pigmentation on the cheeks and the nose of the patient remember melasma is always buff for bilateral and it is buff for brown so buff for bilateral buff for brown is melasma nevus subfoeta will always be a unilateral lesion and it will be blue gray in color this is a dermal melanocytosis even the sclera can be blue here so how do you differentiate melasma from nevus subfoeta melasma is bilateral it is brown nevus subfoeta is unilateral and it is blue gray in color many a times melasma is also there in the options for rosacea for melar rash but they are red and this is brown then you have to differentiate between a congenital melanocytic nevus and a becker's nevus congenital melanocytic nevus will be a black everybody has black moles right just imagine a very big black mole so very big black mole with a lot of black hair this is present since the birth it is a congenital melanocytic nevus increased risk of melanoma in the larger lesions this was the question asked in the march 2020 neat exam so big black congenital nevus have a risk of melanoma developing how do you differentiate a congenital melanocytic nevus from becker's nevus this is also dark this also has hair so how do you differentiate becker's nevus comes at puberty because this is hormone dependent and even though the skin is dark it is not black it is more of brown so becker's buff or becker's buff or brown so this is brown with more hair than normal and it comes at puberty but a congenital melanocytic nevus is black and it is present since birth so that is how you differentiate between these two then this little baby with blue colored macules on the lumbosacral area this is mongolian spot dermal melanocytosis also called as ceruloderma perfectly normal birthmark it is not a disease okay so this is a mongolian spot is the voice better without the mic is the audio better without the mic okay cool so this is mongolian spot blue spots on the back of a baby then we come to white lesions white lesions have of late become very favorite in the ini in the neat in the fmg everywhere where we have albinism this is an autosomal recessive disorder defect in tyrosinase enzyme there is no melanin production in the body skin is white hair is white eyes are blue so this is albinism here you will see full white skin this is albinism remember the inheritance autosomal recessive defect in tyrosinase enzyme 
Then we have vitiligo vulgaris. This is an autoimmune disorder. Vitiligo vulgaris is an autoimmune disorder. Here you will see white macules on the body. So here you will see white macules on the body. But in albinism, you will see complete white. So that is the difference between albinism and vitiligo. Okay, then there is a type of vitiligo which is called as segmental vitiligo. There will be a midline demarcation and the white patches will be in a segment. So this is segmental vitiligo. Okay, unilateral lesions in a segment. This is segmental vitiligo. Are you understanding the difference between albinism and vitiligo in an image? Good. And when they give you the image of segmental vitiligo, they give you options of nevus depigmentosus. They give you options of hypomelanosis of Eto. Please see nevus depigmentosus is a white patch present since the birth, while segmental vitiligo comes later in life. Plus, vitiligo can be associated with leukotrichia, which is white hair in the lesion. That is something you don't see here. So in nevus depigmentosus, remember it will be a lesion present since the birth of the child. Hypomelanosis of Eto was there on the first slide, blastoid pattern. So here what you see, again a midline demarcation and you see white lines in a blastoid pattern. So hypomelanosis of Eto is white lines in a blastoid pattern as if somebody has drawn white colored blastoid lines on the body of the patient. These are also present since the birth. Okay. Then there is another which was there in this exam, nevus of Ito. Ito, nevus and hypomelanosis of Ito, these are two confusing things. But remember where it says hypo, there are white lesions. Where it just says nevus of Ito, there it is blue-gray lesions on the back of the patient. So we had nevus of Ota also. So nevus of Ota was on the face. Remember, O for Ota, O for ocular, it is around the eyes. Okay, so O for Ota, O for eyes. Ito is on the back and don't confuse nevus of Ito with hypomelanosis of Ito. These are very different from each other. When we come to some important types of eczemas, we have hair dye dermatitis, which is caused by paraphenylene diamine, and we have a farmer with airborne contact dermatitis where the cause is parthenium. So, a hair dye dermatitis caused by paraphenyl diamine, airborne contact dermatitis is parthenium, farmer presenting with an itchy rash on exposed parts of the body. Test that we do to confirm is patch test where the reading is taken at 48 and 96 hours. Then we come to atopic dermatitis, which happens due to filagrin deficiency. Image will mostly be of this baby with rash on the face and there will be history of bronchial asthma in the mother. Diagnosis is equal to atopic dermatitis. In childhood AD, most common site is cubital fossa. Then this is an image of Denim organ folds, where we see extra lines under the eyes of the patient. These are the important images from atopic dermatitis. Face of the child with asthma in the mother is atopic dermatitis, cubital fossa, childhood AD and then Denny Morgan folds. Now, if a patient has had a drug followed by a eruption on the body, this is called as a drug eruption. If it is a single purple lesion, fixed drug eruption. Plus, the question may say there is history of a patient having the rash at the same site every time they take the drug. So, the drug is fixed. The site is fixed. <coughs> drug is fixed. Site is fixed. This is fixed drug eruption. <coughs> if there are three concentric rings, this is called as a target lesion called as erythema multiforme. So, a single round purple lesion, fixed drug eruption, three rings target lesion, erythema multiforme. With erythema multiforme, also remember, herpes is the most common infectious cause. Drugs can cause it, but the most common infectious is herpes. Then, if a patient has a drug reaction where there is skin peeling in sheets with oral ulcers, 
this is toxic epidermal necrolysis so in this image you see that the skin is peeling in sheets this is an image of toxic epidermal necrolysis all of these are very 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 important images very important then this was the question asked in last year june 22 exam a patient presents with cafe au lait macules with skin colored swellings on the body as shown in the image what is the inheritance then you see this kind of an image you know you are dealing with nf nf inheritance is <coughs> autosomal dominant what you see in the eyes are leash nodules so when you see this kind of skin colored swellings on the body this is neurofibromatosis inheritance is autosomal dominant then another favorite of the fmg is the xeroderma pigmentosum question from biochem question from derma inheritance autosomal recessive defect in nucleotide excision repair patient presents with dry skin with freckles photosensitivity there may be a family history sibling with similar disease the answer is zero derma pigmentosum zero means dry pigmentosum means freckles so patient presents with a dry skin with freckles with photosensitivity xp inheritance autosomal recessive nucleotide excision repair defect wow again so many so many red 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 boxes this is basal cell carcinoma most common skin malignancy what you see here is an elderly patient presenting with this lesion present since many years <coughs> look at this lesion here this is a classic bcc a skin colored lesion which is very shiny telangiectasias and a beautiful rolled up border so this is a skin colored lesion with telangiectasias with rolled up border this is a classic bcc then here you get an ulcerated bcc you see the ulceration but you also see the typical rolled up border this is called as rodent ulcer this is called as a rodent ulcer generally the question will say that the patient is an elderly 70 year old patient presenting with the lesion on the nose since the past 2 years this is a chronic slow growing malignancy present for many years it is locally aggressive does not metastasize <coughs> then very favorite marginal ulcer when you see this image you see scar on the surrounding skin followed by a non healing chronic ulcer in the center of the scar so when a squamous cell carcinoma develops in a burn scar it is called as marginal ulcer this was the question asked in the july 23 exam so they gave this image then this was the image in the august 2020 exam a cutaneous horn you see it's like a horn on the skin they asked what is the malignancy associated with cutaneous horn it is a squamous cell carcinoma <coughs> bad throat almost 2 months of bad throat this pollution has done so much damage to my throat so malignant melanoma what you see here in malignant melanoma will be a black tumor so black cancer malignant melanoma image asked in 2020 it asked just in the july 23 exam so when you see an asymmetrical lesion with uneven borders with multiple colors this is malignant melanoma you follow the abcde rule asymmetrical uneven borders multiple colors diameter larger changes evolving this is the abcde assessment which hints towards diagnosis of malignant melanoma then acanthosis nigricans will be a velvety hyperpigmentation on the neck associated with causes of insulin resistance like diabetes obesity metabolic syndrome then gastric adenocarcinoma can also be associated with acanthosis nigricans beautiful velvety hyperpigmentation on the neck can also be present on the axillae <coughs> then dermatomyositis patient will have skin involvement and muscle involvement on the skin we have heliotrope rash which is red rash around the eyes of the patient on the hands we see these purple violaceous papules on the interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints these are called as 
these are called as Gottron's papules. So very, very, very important question. Pathognomonic lesion of dermatomyositis, Gottron's papules. What is the type of myositis here? Can anyone tell me? This was probably a question asked in the January 2023 exam also. A patient presents with skin rash, with difficulty in climbing stairs, combing the hair. So what is this? This is bilateral proximal myopathy. So dermatomyositis has proximal myopathy plus heliotrope rash and Gotrans papules. <coughs> wow, wow, wow. Pellagra and acrodermatitis enteropathica. Beautiful red boxes tell us that, wow, this may be a question asked in the Jan 24 exam also. Maybe next year I want to put a red box here also. And I want you to answer it in the exam. Pellagra deficiency of niacin, which is vitamin B3. More in maize eaters, more in alcoholics. Patient presents with DDD, diarrhea, dermatitis and dementia. Untreated can cause death. We see this nice V-shaped casal necklace on the neck. This is pellagra. Then we have acrodermatitis enteropathica, deficiency of zinc, autosomal recessive inheritance. Triad is DAD, diarrhea, alopecia, dermatitis. This is what the question mentioned. A 8-month-old baby presented with diarrhea, skin rash, alopecia, poor wound healing. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is acrodermatitis enteropathica. You will see rash on the face or the groin of the baby. Then we have neutrophilic dermatosis, which are more common in patients who suffer from inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, can develop sweet syndrome, can develop <coughs> <coughs> Can develop sweet syndrome, can develop pyoderma gangrenosum. What is sweet? This is a mithai. It's a dessert. So, patient presents with red mithai. So, painful red mithai. Okay. So, painful red mithai is sweet syndrome. And gangrene means ulcer. Here, patient presents with an ulcer with violaceous margins. So, a patient suffering from inflammatory bowel disease with red methai, sweet syndrome, with a gangrenous ulcer, pyoderma, gangrenosum. Treatment of choice for both is steroids. And this is the last slide for the day. Vascular lesions, port wine stain, present since birth, unilateral, segmental, <coughs> division V1 and V2 of trigeminal nerve. Non-blanchable P for port wine, P for persistent stays throughout the life of the patient. A syndrome associated with port wine stain is the Sturge Weber syndrome, where there is a port wine stain with glaucoma, with ipsilateral <coughs> tram track calcifications and contralateral seizures. Then we have Salmon patch, which is again present since birth as a red macule in the midline. See, this will be a midline lesion while port wine stain will be a unilateral lesion. Okay, so this is the difference when you see the image. Plus, salmon patch will be blanchable, port wine stain is non-blanchable. Then we come to the last which is infantile hemangioma. This is a vascular tumor, it's a capillary tumor. This will be a lal laddu. So, this will be a red laddu. It is not present at the birth comes in the first month. This was the question in the Jan 23 exam where the La Laddu was a diagnosis of infantile hemangioma. With this, what was supposed to be a 25 minute session has turned out to be a 135 minute session, maybe more 150 minutes also. But I hope all the important images in dermatology are clear to you. Hopefully, there should be nothing outside of what we have discussed. I could not compress it to 25 because I wanted to again take this opportunity to discuss all the important images with you. I hope the session helps you. Now, after looking at the session, the only thing that you need to go is go back and do the previous year questions. 
come back, revise this session and your dermatology is done. That's it. I can promise you, you don't need anything more. But after doing this session, after watching this session, go back and do the previous year papers. There is a YouTube video on the Dr. Toyo's channel only. The PYQ discussion is there. Then all the other years are also there separately. Please, please, please do the PYQs. Do the questions and see the video again. This will be the best way to finish the subject for your exam. Any doubts, you can always get back to us. You can put comments here. You can contact me on Instagram, Dr. Pallavi Dermatology. We will be more than happy to help. All the best for your exam. Good night.